Graham's Ark this week is at the Southridge Animal Centre at Potter's Bar. And to tell us a little bit more about the centre and how it works is the Chief Animal Welfare Establishments Officer, Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Uh, can I ask you, what exactly is the centre for? Well, these centres are for unwanted, stray, domestic animals and wildlife animals. And when I talk about the stray and unwanted animals, people don't understand the problem in this country. But well, to give you some idea of the question of the problem in the Metropolitan Police Area in London, they have 14,000 stray dogs a year. In addition to that, another 16,000 unwanted. That's 30,000 stray and unwanted dogs in the London area. And if you break that down, that is nearly 600 a week. And break that down even further, that's one dog every 18 minutes, either discarded or unwanted. That's a lot. That's a lot of dogs. Now, you're talking about dogs, they're domestic animals. Um, at the centre, are they all domestic animals? No, you've got the wildlife animals here. You've got, we've got, you'll see here, we've got the birds, you have deer, we have the question of foxes or badgers, which we all rehabilitate before they go back to the natural environment. And this is a large centre. Um, are there any more centres like this around the country? Yes, we've got 57 animal homes, and also, in addition to that, 60 animal welfare centres, another 50 clinics, we have three animal hospitals, we've got a, a oil cleaning unit for birds which get oiled up, and we've got a wildlife sanctuary as well. And they all vary in size? Uh, yes, some are smaller, some are larger, and the cost of this centre here would be in the region of £60,000 a year to run, because it's open 24 hours a day, and we get no state aid at all, so all the money comes from actually donations or from legacies from the public. David, how many dogs do you have here a month on average? Uh, it varies from about 100 to 150. Sounds, sounds like a lot of dogs. Yes, Why do you get so many? Yes, quite a lot of dogs coming in. All sorts of reasons, either the marriage breaking up, um, the people cannot afford to feed them, which is a very popular one at this sort of time when the recession is biting, um, that they are abandoned, you know, animals are abandoned, and all these cruelty cases. Some rather sad reasons, really. Uh, quite a few. Sad ones, yes. And what happens when you get them in then? You put them in the kennels? They come in the kennel. First of all, we're inoculated and checked over them. We put them in the kennels and we have a card written out. Is yes, that the white card? Yes, yeah, in fact, I brought one to show you. Um, this is a dog we'll be seeing shortly and uh, we give them a number when they come in. This one's number 9122, which is the 912th dog we've had in this year. Nice. Uh, the information on the side here, Middlesex Northwest, is the branch, the RSPCA branch, in whose area the dog came from. Uh, description of the dog, it's a German Shepherd dog. The colour, obviously, is black and sable. Yeah. Uh, age, three years approximately. And also at the side of female there, because this, this one's a female, uh, you've put spayed. Yeah, if um, the bitch that comes in isn't spayed, then before it leaves here, we would have it done you know, for the new owner. Name of the dog, Daphne. In this case, the dog was given the name Daphne by the staff here. The date she came in, the 23rd of October. Inoculations, she's had a Glaxo, which is a temporary jab against yes. distemper, and the fellow cell is an enteritis vaccine, which is for the new parvovirus disease. Do you inoculate all the dogs that come in? If they haven't already been fully done, we'll inoculate them on arrival. Um, date of worming, if they, we worm the dogs, we'll write it in here. Right. Any other remarks we have will be written in here. The reason for parting, well, in this case, this dog was on the run for two years, so really? she was living wild. In fact, she had three litters of puppies during the two years and caused a lot of problems locally where people were trying to catch her, the police, the RSPCA, and eventually she was caught on the 23rd of October. Um, other information we've got, whether she's been with children, this I'm afraid we do not know. Whether she's been with cats, again, we don't know if she's good with cats. We do know that she's travelled okay because she's travelled about with us here. Um, again, we don't know if she's house trained, although she appears very clean in the kennels. Um, we don't know if she's been, if she can be left or not, and uh, whether she's boisterous. And the answer is no. She's quite a quiet dog. Will, you, will she be difficult to find a home for? Um, so far, she's proving very difficult. Yes, um, basically because we don't know much about her background, and obviously we don't want to place her with young children as we don't know how she will be with them. You find people tend to go for puppies rather than adult um, dogs. A lot of people would like a puppy to start right from the very scratch, but also a lot of people do like to have an older dog that's trained and uh, won't mess indoors. 
How long do they stay here? Uh, it varies. On average, we can home within 10 days to two weeks, it's but some good. do stick, you know, a month or so. Yeah, those are the more difficult ones to home. Yeah, there's no real... You can't really pick out a dog and say, this is going to get a home tomorrow, right. but some do stick with us a bit longer. How much does it cost you per day to keep a dog here? Oh, um, obviously, with a lot, all the overheads, it's very expensive, but for the ordinary owner, it's about three or four pounds a week for the majority of dogs. Which is not too bad. Not really. But, of course, you've got to take into account as well that not only is the food costs, but private boarding, if you go in on holidays, or veterinary treatment or inoculations. So there's quite a lot of other things to take into consideration. What happens if there's any infection within the kennels? Um, obviously, we've got to get rid of the infection, and the only way you can do that is by disinfecting. Which you have to take all the dogs out? Uh, in the blocks, yeah. Dave, we're in the cattery now. Now, this is a completely different atmosphere to being in the kennels. It's a lot quieter, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, very quiet. The cats don't make very much noise. It's a different smell as well. Um, yeah, probably with all the disinfectant that's used daily in here. What about looking after a cat, then? We said, you know, the cost of looking after a dog. Is it about the same? Uh, for feeding a cat, probably goes from about 150 to £2 pounds a week to feed it properly. Oh, and um, um, care of it. You know, what about the... the no, this, I mean, the building's different, isn't it? The yeah, well, in here we've got, um, as you can see, a very, very smooth flooring, uh, which is very easy to clean. Yeah. Uh, all the cats have a cardboard bed, which is fixed with a blanket. Um, this is easy because once the cat goes, we can dispose of the box straight away. Um, we also have infrared heating for all the cats, which can be turned on and off whenever they're required. Do you get more cats, uh, more cats and kittens in than dogs? No, less cats, but it does increase in the summer months. And virtually every single day of the week, we've got 20 or 30 phone calls of people wanting to get rid of cats and kittens. Really? What, um, a lot of the cats, what, they're found on the roadside, just abandoned? Um, a lot of them are just dumped in boxes, uh, left, people move away and leave them. Um, people who have cats but never get them neutered. And then, of course, when they produce kittens, they can't find them. Of course, they can't look them. after them. Yeah. And do um, you give them names or anything like that? Or uh, we don't usually name try not uh, to get most touch. of the cats because obviously they don't pick up the knowing the names as quickly as the dogs do. Yeah. And uh, how often do you feed them? Uh, the, the kittens will be fed four, four times a day, uh, but we feed all the adults twice a day in the morning and in the afternoon. So now, you mentioned in the, the run outside, um, the, 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 the pla it's the, the, all the runs are separated by plastic. Yes, this is so. Th the kennels. Yeah, this is so that the cats who like companionship can see each other, um, but also the, there's the less risk of infection because with having the sheeting, any sneezing or anything like that which might go on, the germs aren't passed through to the other pens. When people come for a kitten or a cat, well, uh, actually, do they tend to go for the kitten? If they see it? Uh, obviously, this time of year, yes, everybody wants kittens, and the cats, poor old cats, get left behind a bit. But uh, it is a time for picking up kittens. I think Kate's going to take one home with her, aren't you, Kate? I think Kate's having a nice time, aren't you? Do you Kate? like them? <laughs> Which one have you got attached to the most? Which one? Have you found a name for him? No, um, BJ. BJ? <laughs> David, you must be very pleased to see that this kitten has found a new home. Yes, it's always good to see all the animals and dogs and cats coming in and getting new homes. Uh, these people came along wanting a kitten. We found they were suitable to have a kitten from us. They've had a look round and seen one which they like. Uh, what happens now is that they've adopted the kitten and in a few weeks' time we'll get someone to pop round and make sure everything's OK. it looks like someone's found a good home. Mind you, you know, they're not badly off here. Uh, there are plenty of friendly hands around to look after them. And just the other day, I came along here to meet some of David's voluntary helpers. 
Hi. Hello. Vicky. Yeah. Joanne. And Claire. And some smashing puppies as well. Has it been a busy day? Yeah, it usually is. Is it? How often do you come down? We come at weekends and during our summer holidays. So virtually all your spare time then? Yeah. You obviously enjoy it. Yeah, we love it. And what, what do you do? What, what does your day consist of? What jobs? Well, we arrive here at 8.30 and then we start work at quarter to nine and then we clean up the kennels and the cattery and then we start on the vent house and the apiaries. You have a cup of tea as well, you tell yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> and in the afternoons we exercise the dogs and then feed them about 4.30. It's quite a hectic day, yeah. a complete one as well. And what about when you leave school? Do you do you want to work with animals? I like to work here. Would you? Do what? Do the same job? Yeah. What about you, Joanne? Uh, I'd like to be a vet. Are you brainy then? No, <laughs> I'd like to be the same. I'd like to work here, but even though I'd like to be, work with ponies. Now, if anybody watching wanted to help at one of the centres, what would they do? They'd have to come up and they'd have to be a certain age before they do that. How old do they have to be? Thirteen. And what, just go on to one of the centres and um, and ask if they can help? Yeah, just uh, volunteer, be a volunteer worker. And be prepared for hard work? Yeah. Now David and Debbie, this litter of puppies that the girls were holding are new arrivals. Yes, what that's right. What do you right. do with them from now on? Uh, well, first of all, when the puppies come in, we give them a quick check over. We vaccinate them both against uh, temporary jab against distemper and also temporary vaccination against the new can you show us? virus. Yep, we also worm them one? and deflee them. Uh, I've provided this one and Debbie can do the other little puppy. What? First of all, would you like to hold his bum for me? Sure. Uh, I open his mouth, yeah. drop the worm tablet on the back of the throat, close his mouth, just massage the throat a little bit. It's um, painful. No. <laughs> uh, once he swallows it, he usually sticks his tongue out and you know he's had it. And this helps, this clears all the round worms out within the next 24 hours. So it's, yeah, so it's clear there. It's just a tablet. And uh, as you can see, Debbie's doing the spray. What does that do? This uh, kills any fleas it may have. Very, very strong stuff, which you can only get from a veterinary surgeon. How often should you do that? I mean, is that just... Um, this only takes about uh, five, six seconds spray, and that will kill any fleas it's got. Well, I mean, do you repeat it later on in life? Um, oh, yeah, at any time. I mean, during the summer, they pick up fleas very easily. So it probably needs to be done quite a few times just throughout the summer. Right, and what happens then? Uh, it kills the fleas, that's it. You know, within a minute they're dead. Oh, I meant uh, <laughs> with, the, uh, with the injections. We... With the injections, yeah, we'll vaccinate one of the other puppies. This one's already had his first one. So if we don't pass it with the little one. What, the other one's been done as well, been um, sprayed? <coughs> They've been done, yeah. It's just this little puppy's got to have his jams. This one's only come in today. Oh, does he um, not belong with those? No, it's a separate lizard. This one's come in with his mum. Uh, not in very good nick, actually. Oh, crying. Big grubby. <laughs> Are you going to give him a clean up? <laughs> we'll have a clean up, yeah. Oh. Only about six weeks old. Let's see. How, how old are, what are the other ones? They're seven weeks old. Little girl. Anyway, the first injection we'll give her. Again, if you'd like, perhaps like to hold sure. it for me. Yeah. We'll give her the vaccination against part of the virus. Right. Does that hurt? Uh, <laughs> Making me cringe watching. They don't oh, seem to feel it as much like as the it. others. And you know. uh, this is a temporary injection against this the temper. Can what be done by a vet or? Uh, well, these are only temporary inoculations. I must stress that point. Um, the full inoculations must be done at 12 weeks of age, and it must be done by a veterinary surgeon. Right. Okay. Obviously, you mustn't attempt anything like this yourself. Oh, certainly not now. Um, I mean, they've got a very, very tiny body, and you've got to get it between the skin and the flesh. That's right. Okay, that's uh, the injections. And after that, it's complete? Uh, he's got to have a worm cover. Same well, has he not had one? No. Try to hold his back. Uh, well, open his mouth. Open mouth, down the throat, close it. You give him a glass of water, that'd be easier. <laughs> Quite a big tablet for a little baby. It is. Is he done and dusted now? That's it, he just wants a little freeze, freeze spray. Okay, Give him a spray. Is he done and dusted like the rest now? That's it, all over and done with. All finished. I said that he was a little bit dirty yeah. earlier on, and you were going to give him a bath sometime. How, how do you bathe the dog? Well, I think the best thing to do is we'll show you. Alright then. Hi, girls. 
He says popping up behind you. Julia and Evelyn, what are you doing? Is he enjoying that? Uh, yes, well, well I think so. <laughs> what do you do? Put shampoo on first? Uh, well, wet her first and then shampoo. What and shampoo is it? Dog shampoo? Yes, it's an insecticidal one. So if I get any parasites. What? Give it a good rub in, do you then? Mm. Then what? Rinse it off well and then dry her. Is that what you're doing now? Rinsing Rinse off? Rinsing mm. off now. She doesn't seem to mind. No, she likes it, I think. How often should you bath the dog? Not too often, because it takes all the oils out of their coats. So, unless they're particularly dirty dogs. Twice yearly, normally they say. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you get some that fight against it? Oh, yeah, some fight you more than they do the dog. <laughs> and what happens when you swill the water off? She starts um, to dry herself. <laughs> <laughs> we have to towel dry her first. Where? Over there on the we take her across. You managed to keep her up. Must be a knacking carrier. Sit down, let's go. You do a rubber with a towel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's enjoying this. Yeah, <laughs> now, what happens when you finish drying her with a towel? Um, well, then we dry her with a hair dryer. Hair dryer? Is it just a normal hair dryer, is it? No, it's a. Uh, it's quite a lot stronger than the one. Oh, <laughs> it's a lot more heads of Does she mind this? Um, well, some dogs do. She doesn't, actually. Um, they don't like it on their faces. Um, it's all loose hairs on my hand. What do you brush it for? Well, just to get out all the dead hair. And, you know, prevent any matting. That happens every time you wash it, does it? Um, does that apply with most dogs? You give them a brush afterwards? Yes, yes, I think. Same as you would just have a Right, thanks very much, girls. David, you must be very pleased to see all these photographs of uh, pets that people have adopted in the past. And I, I, I bet there's one or two favourites there. What about Ricky? Uh, yeah, well, Ricky came in, he was ill-treated, and uh, he's found a good home with one of our helpers. Uh, if we go across to Barney the Beagle, he was one of these from the Welsh Beagle Research Place, which closed down in 76. Boson the African Grey Parrot, he appeared on Thames Television and got a new home through those. He's got a happy home now, has he? Yeah, he's doing very well. And Mogridge, the cat named after the centre, was abandoned at the centre. And and where's he now? He's uh, got a new home and doing very well. Good. You may remember at the beginning of the programme, David mentioned pit ponies. Well, we'll be having a look at those a little bit later on in the series. But as a taster, here's two of David's, David's pet ponies, Jack and Pot. That's right. Oh, they're uh, smashing. Yeah, these two came from uh, the mines near Newcastle. And Jack, which is the one I've got, is 26 years old. He's worked down <laughs> the mines for 19 years. And Pot, your one's, is 12 years old and has worked down the mine for seven years. But he's been retired on ill health. He's a nice pet to you now, is he? Uh, yeah, they're both retired here and they'll stay here now. Well, um, David, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it's been and a my pleasure. thanks also to the girls that have helped us on today's programme. And in fact, David will be back with us next week on the programme. We'll He'll be taking us to, the, to a veterinary hospital. So we look forward to that, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.